your app is probably dealing with long texts fetched from an API. In this case, you would want to use the flexor tag. Text boxes with the flexor tag expand downwards if the content is longer than the box we initially set up. Welcome to AppMonster, my name is Jonas and in this episode we are having real world examples for the flexor tag and we're going to have a look at how it works. I've prepared a Figma file for this episode, as always you can find that in the description below. We have two screens here, one using the flexor tag and one without. These two screens will be connected to some data fetched from an API. This is actually an example from my Plantagram app, which I discussed in another video. In this video, we're just going to have a look at the flexor tag and how it affects text boxes. So when we're having a look here at our structure, we'll see that I've used the flexor tag here in in one of our frames and then we have the text here, the plant name, and this has the flexor tag. To use the flexor tag, you always need to have a frame around that. The flexor tag should also always be the last element in this frame. So for example, you can see that in this frame, alias and description, in this frame we have two text elements, one with the flexor tag and one without the flexor tag. The one with flexor tag needs to be the bottommost. So we can put a number of elements above this flexor tag, but we can't put anything below this. So we couldn't just switch up these positions. That wouldn't work because the flexor tag would try to expand the box downwards, but there is this box in the way. So we want to have that set up like this. A rule of thumb is new frame, new game. So as soon as we close this frame here, we can start with the whole process again. So we could place other elements underneath a flexor tag if we put them in a new frame. This is exactly what I did here. So we have a new frame here. These are, as you always have to remember, frames need to touch each other. So we don't have any spacing in between here. but these don't affect each other. It will also not be possible to have two flexor tags in the same frame here. So this is the same problem as I explained earlier. There shouldn't be any element underneath a flexor tag, even if this element has a flexor tag as well. The flexor tag only works if our text box here is also connected to data from an API. So for example, this subheading here is static text. So it wouldn't make any sense to put the flexor tag on there. Now let's have a look at how to connect that with the data and see how it looks in real life. Here in Bravo Studio, you can see that I have both of my screens imported. And let's have a look at only the flex example without flexo would be exactly the same. You can see I have just here for the Flexo tutorial, a different request where we just want to get the plant name, then the subheading also known as and some text so we can really take a look at how the Flexo tag behaves. So I haven't connected the image, but the plant name would be connected to my plant. This would be of course different for your app, but I think you know how to work around this data binding. You can also check out my other tutorials like the blog app. I go into detail about the data binding there. For now, let's just say we have all of these things connected and now take a look at that inside of Bravo Vision. When I open my app in Bravo Vision, you can see that we no longer have plant name. Here so we have the actual plant name. so. I don't know how to pronounce that, but this is the plant and we have the also known as is also replaced. And we have some text here, the tips and the rest is also connected. The interesting part is how this looks when the data is connected, but we didn't use the flexor tag. So if I click on this top bar, I get directed to the second screen, which is not using the flexor tag. And you can already see 
that our name is cut here. So we don't have the full name. Just as a reminder, sensation is missing. Also our text, this ends with the green leaves, but green leaves is only, let's see if I can find that dark green leaves. So all of this text is not displayed because we didn't use the flexor tag. As you can see, the flexor tag expands the text box downwards. And also since we put it into a container, this container pushes the other containers below. So we don't have any overlapping here. This text isn't displayed over our static subheading here. It just pushes everything down. That's already basically the flexor tag. So always make sure to have your flexor text box inside of a container and also make it the bottommost element inside of the container. Now let's have a look at some special cases. First of all, using the flexo tag inside of a container with the top bar attribute. So you can see we have a top bar container here. I have a full video on the top bar already on my channel. You can check that out if you need any more information on how that works. But for the flexo tag, it's important to know that this might look like I'm using the flexor tag here, but this is just the name of the text. So I could name that heading here. This doesn't affect any text in here. So if you have like a long heading, make sure to put that inside of your content and not inside of the container top bar. Another special case is if you have any backgrounds. So imagine we're having an rectangle around here, this should work as our background. Since the flexor tag only applies to the text box, our rectangle won't be expanding. The rectangle will look like this, but the text will be going down like here. So for example, if you're using something with rounded corners, this wouldn't expand downwards with the rounded corners. The flexo tag only applies to the text. The last special case is using the flexo tag in list pages. I've made a diagram for that because you might wonder if you can create a masonry layout. Masonry layout looks like this. So if an element is a little smaller than the others, these will move up to fill that space. This is not what happens with Bravo. Bravo's layout looks like this. So you're always sure that these elements have the same size. The same thing goes the other way around. So imagine this red box here would be a normal text, but this one is longer. Bravo's containers are handled like flex boxes in web design. So you can just imagine this being like a block that has always the same height. I hope this video has helped you. And I'm sure you've learned something new because some of these edge cases are not talked about in the documentation. And trust me, I did a lot of testing. The flexor tag can be difficult sometimes, but I hope with this video, you can solve everything. Should that not be the case, you can always leave a comment down below or just visit the community on Spectrum and ask your question there. As always, there's also the Figma file linked down below so you can just copy and paste that. If you want to get the most out of Bravo Studio, make sure to subscribe since I'll be releasing new tips and guides regularly. And I also post small tricks on Twitter, so make sure to check that out as well. Thank you for watching and keep Bravo rising.